As clerk of Tynwald, I suppose I had the, the key role in that I was the, the sort of permanent officer of the body which was celebrating its thousandth birthday. But I was also secretary of what was called the Millennium Committee, which was the committee of Tynwald set up to coordinate and plan for the event. A young bearded man, as he was at the time, and he really did an um, enormous amount of spade work, you know. Yes. Everything had to yeah. be planned and written yeah. down in detail. And I think Robert was great help, really. Don't you think oh, so? yes, he was terrific. Joy to work with. You know, you just have to mention something to be off. Yes, you like going around everywhere. You never missed a chance, really. Yes. I met a lot of people during Millennium, yeah. Like the King of Norway and the President of Iceland and the President of Malta and you, you know what. The organisation quickly became far too much for me to handle on my own, so we, so we, we sort of established an office um, which had wonderful people in it, like the late Kerwin Clegg of Isle of Man Tourist Board fame, um, Edgar Cottier, still around, I'm glad to say, Bert McBain Lee, and a few others, particularly those who came in to organise particular weeks, such as Charles Gard, um, who organised the Celtic Week. I was very much involved in Millennium Year because I was headhunted by Sir Charles, or Charles Carouche as he was at that time, to organise Celtic Week, which was the week directly after Tinwell Day, actually. And I spent thousands of pounds of government money bringing over all sorts of artists from Brittany and Scotland and Ireland, and we had a marvellous time. Well, of course, um, I think all the organisers, of which I was one, have many, many uh, hair-raising stories to tell because we weren't really professional organisers. Success wasn't confined, you know, to ethnic weeks or local, local promotions. It went broader. I think without Sir Charles's um, contribution and pretty dignified contribution to things, a lot of them would have been a lot lesser events than they turned out to be, particularly with some of the high powered guests that they managed to attract in that year. He was my vice chairman, and he was chairman of the parliamentary and ceremonial committee, you see. Oh, he was very involved, yes. John was a member of the House of Keys at the age of 29, and he was the youngest member. He was the youngest speaker when he was 45. There's Sir John Paul. He was an absolute pillar of that year. He was absolutely brilliant. His term of office was extended a year so that he could actually see Millennium Year through. He was an excellent Lieutenant Governor, I think, and, and I think it was very wise for him to be able to stay on for that year because he's, he did lead us through it very well indeed. He was experienced in, in events of that kind um, through his own diplomatic service beforehand. It was a constant um, input of visits, of royal visits and heads of state and goodness knows what. You know? So for a new chap to come in and have to uh, handle all this would have been a bit difficult, I think. And he, I think, um, together with the, the government of the day, uh, organised it very well indeed. And certainly he was a, a lovely attitude of a person to have around. Yes, that's, yes, that was indeed. Is that you at the end? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. And then his honour, the first to be 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 and I, I might tell you, Robert and I had some trauma. We went through some traumatic times, but we got there. Yeah, she was heavily involved in the whole year, actually, one way or another. And uh, it was a delight working with her. <laughs>